Feeling ready? Well, I've got loads of time on my hands. Phenomenal. I'm ready. You're, you're lucky that I've got just three. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm really excited. First of all, let's start off with telling me about yourself. Well, not many people watching. <laughs> so, Siobhan, I am a content creator, mostly in the fashion industry. Um, at just a uniform, new website coming soon, cheeky plug. And um, you find me mostly on Instagram. Um, that's where a lot of my content goes at the moment. And I have a real mix of styles. So hopefully today you're going to see that in a bit of an eclectic taste. Yeah, that's exciting. So how did you get into like just a uniform? What made you decide to go for it? And... So I was a teacher for seven years in primary school and although it was great and a lot of lessons were learned, um, I was never my dream job to do that. It was sort of something that felt right at that moment in time. And in the end, it just wasn't right for me at all. And I'd had enough. And myself and Jay went away on holiday and I watched Iris Atfeld's documentary. And um, for, she just really inspired me. If you haven't watched the documentary, I think it's still on Netflix, but definitely check it down. It's phenomenal. And she really inspired me to go and sort of be myself really and do what I wanted to do. And pre-internet days people um or pre-social media because that's how old I am um, people would stop me in the street and ask me where I got my hair done or ask me where my clothes are from so being um on Instagram was just sort of a natural progression really and starting up a blog all about fashion to share everything just felt like something I'd been doing all my life and then um there was no sweet formula people were always like so tell me like how do I get into this I quit my job and just didn't have didn't have a website, didn't have just a uniform, didn't have a domain, nothing, and just started and just knew that when I want something to work, I put my heart and soul into it, and um, sort of here we are really. And uh, my husband Jay is uh, on board with all this as well now, so we're a team and we sort of plan to make it a bigger team one day eventually as well. So that's like into the future. That's so fab. How did you come up with the name? Oh, great question. Someone asked me this the other day, actually. So, um, in um, Iris doc Iris's documentary, she says that um, people downtown, now don't quote me word for word, but people downtown wear black, they think it's fashion, it's not, it's just a uniform. So that's where yeah. I took it from because I'm not really a person that wears the colour black. So um, it just felt right. So it's sort of a bit of play on words because it isn't just a uniform. Etc. There's a bit of sarcasm in there, which is definitely who I am as well. <laughs> okay, I love it, and I love the fact that you and Jay are a team on this. Is that's really yes. exciting? It's nice to have. Like, do you find that it's nice to have that support? Like, what makes, what's good about him being in it for you? Like, what's the so a hundred percent. So pre Jay being in it, I did a couple of years before Jay sort of came and left his full time job and came on board. And um, I was always working with lots of different photographers that were very talented in their own right, but um, they all had a different style. And um, obviously also, they had their own interests at heart. They're lovely people, but at the end of the day, we're all doing this to sort of build our own empire. And um, working with Jay means that we've got a style that we've both agreed on and a consistent style and um, also... I can just put all my trust in him because I know he wants this as much as I do. So I sort of um, don't have to really think about that side of it at all anymore. Like, I would really like to get into photography like you, Lindsay, to be honest with you. And I definitely need to learn a bit more about that. I love filming, like actually doing video content. But um, Jay is definitely way more talented in that area. So having him as sort of the expert expertise in that area, and then I can concentrate on my writing and my styling and sort of the fashion side of it, really, rather than the technical side of it. And he's also great at coding. So he's building my website at the moment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a real sort of merging of skills and a team and um, I really enjoy that side of things and we can bounce ideas off each other as well and make sure it works for both of us and how we both see just a uniform going. Yeah that's fab and did you some people it might be their worst nightmare to work with their partner and um, have you ever come up with anything that you like you've struggled with or do you just it was easy from day day one? 
Oh no, it definitely wasn't easy in <laughs> day one, no. Um, so we're both um, very passionate people, <laughs> strong-willed people, and um, have ideas, both of us. So my advice to anyone would be it's not easy, like you have to compromise, obviously. But my biggest advice would be would be to set roles. So my, my, now it's a dream come true and we actually, we obviously in the situation that we're in at the moment with lockdown, it's not really any different for myself and Jay. We do literally live in each other's pockets. But it's making sure that one person isn't doing the same as the other person. So if I all of a sudden came in and started telling Jay about how um, he should edit and start talking about that, I'm sure that would rub him up the wrong way completely. Just the same that if he started telling me how to dress and the clothes that I should be wearing and the brands that I should be working with, then that would rub me up the wrong way. So we have definitely got very split roles in Just a Uniform. And I sort of get the work on board and I'm the person that like talks to all the brands and does the, does the schmoozing and um, <laughs> all the sort of copies out and all the stuff that looks really great. And um, Jay is the person that we then come up with a concept together and obviously shoot together. And then from there, Jay's the one that takes it over, comes up with how it's going to look and the edit and um, what sort of the the mood of it all is going to be, which we sort of like come together in the middle on that one. And then at the end, um, I then come up with copy and then put it out to like the world. And I'm the one that like builds that audience engaged. So we definitely have very separate roles that in the middle come together, making sure that we both agree on concept. Yeah, and it's so good because I'm flicking through your Instagram or stalking it. <laughs> I don't flick through. I definitely look at every single picture. Um, do you? It seems to have such. There's such a strong like brand and idea and stuff. Like, have you ever had a time where you thought you've looked at it and thought, oh, it's not really me or it's not really just a uniform? Like, how have you managed to? It seems like it's always been that and you've managed to have a really clear idea. Why do you think that is, or do you think that's true? I, I don't, honestly, <laughs> like that's probably the only thing myself and Jay argue about is that we, we really struggle to have that in our minds, that we're always like searching to have that real, um, as you say, consistency. And everyone always says to me, oh, I think you've got a real, like when people ask me about my style, I'm always like, oh, it's all over the place. Like I can tell you what I don't like, but I yeah. like, lots and lots and lots of things so um I was just uh, but everyone says to me oh no you've definitely got like a style that you have and then you can see that through um, the pictures that you put out as well but we're always searching for perfection that's one trait that myself and Jay really share and um, we're both perfectionists which doesn't always help in the world of social media where you need to get a lot of, a lot of content out but we, I feel like recently we've really found our feet and we, we've got an, sort of an editorial, like we have like an idea for an editorial and I've been mood boarding a hell of a lot more and making sure that the theme that we want really fits in with the, what we're looking for. So um, it's just, uh, it's just taken a lot of time and a lot of like making mistakes really to finally feel like we're getting somewhere and shooting in the same light and making sure that we're shooting in one location so you've got the same sort of light and you've got the the same sort of styling throughout and then that that comes out in the consistency but when you're not someone that wears just black or just sort of like those beige tones that some of the girls do so beautifully it is quite hard to keep a consistent theme when your brain is like pure like different creative aspects that I take inspiration from so many places yeah I yeah I definitely feel that because I see that with people's Instagram and stuff and they've just got like the whole beige thing or the Scandi thing and it looks amazing but then I feel a bit like a sponge sometimes and like I like it all and it's hard not to be like okay well this week I'm going to do this and then just it all be confusing yep exactly it's so it's so hard when you're as you say like a sponge and you take inspiration from so many places like oh maybe we could do that and like really trying to stay like focused and be like no this shoot is about this so I take it really like how I look at a magazine shoot and that in like say Vogue they have a million different types of shoots in there so they'll have one that um is really minimal and really like like as you say like that sort of beautiful Scandi minimalist and then they'll have one that's really styled in like a really quirky hotel and I feel like that's how I see just a uniform is that these sort of separate editorials are like my part of my magazine mm-hmm. yeah definitely 
Okay. And that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, fab. So, should we move on to your first item, the item that you love? Yeah, okay. So I'm so I excited to see what you've got. For the item that I love because I couldn't physically <laughs> whittle it down to one and you're, you're lucky that I've got just three because there <laughs> so many more. So, my first item is a new addition to um, my life and these oh my are gosh. my Boy Boutique Mules and honestly... I have been eyeing these up for such a long time. They're so beautiful. They are so nice. I knew I'd wear them so much because they're a mule, they're flat, and um, so they'd be comfortable and practical as well as looking rather epic. And I didn't get them when they first came out. Um, I missed the boat there. And also I did really want to make sure that I really wanted them. However, I went on Vestier Collective. I've got a lot of time on my hands at the moment because of my <laughs> lockdown situation. So um, Vestier and eBay and Depop have been seeing a lot of me recently. And um, I went on Vestier Collective and these were on there and they were on there for such a good price and they'd come from someone that... Um, I think they'd come, um, I know Vestia is in France, but they were actually a French seller. And um, this person was a size 37, which I am. And it just felt like it was meant to be. And she literally just reduced them as well. And I was like, okay, yes, click. So they arrived. And I have never been happier. I'm so happy with them. They're They're so nice. Yeah, they're so nice. There's something about like winning something even though it's like a second-hand piece, there's just something about it that you're just like, yes, you just feel like such a sense of achievement. Like you yeah. found it, you scoped it out. It's really Like it good. was meant to be. Yeah. I mean, shoes are a tricky one because obviously, like I know when I try and sell shoes, they take forever to sell because it's a very small part of the population that is your your sort of shoe size, especially being a four, not everybody's a four. I think a six is the most common. So yeah. with the, yeah, you're right. Especially like when we found them, I'm currently, and I love Vestier for this. Like I'm, I like that you have like an idea of that, that piece that you really want and then you can go and search for it and you can watch things and eventually the right piece came up and definitely having them in the pink was something I was looking for as well. So yeah, that winner, winner. That colour is amazing. I love, so much. love it. Okay, what's your so you've got three things that you love. Yeah, sorry. They're all like accessories as well. No, um, don't apologize. <laughs> next up are my Prada sunglasses. Yeah. Um that I actually got last year and that's why I sort of wanted to talk about them. And last year I'm gonna put them on even though they don't go with my outfit. I love them so much. Yeah, they're so great they're reflections. And um, last year I um, got them and I was like, oh, they're so cool. I'm going to get them. They're a rework of um, one of their original um, sunglasses collections, which the name has completely escaped me, so I do apologise. But um, they, um, and I didn't love them last year. Like, I got them and I was like, oh, they're really cool, but I don't think they shoot, suit my face shape, which is really odd for me because I'm a real glasses person, like glasses yeah. are my thing. And um, I did think, oh, that's such a shame. And then this year, I don't know what it is. Well, my hair's grown, but I think it was like having a really short bob. They really um, suited like that hairstyle. And I am in love with those at the moment. I want to wear them all the time. So I'm very much here for them. They've got like a bit of a 50s vibe. I'm here for them. They fit my face. They don't fall off my face, which a lot of glasses do. And um, oh, it's love. It's absolutely Yeah, they're love. so nice. For me, sunglasses are always like a second thought. They're never really anything that I've been like obsessed with or anything. I'm I always forget them. I'm wandering around squinting. Have you always been a fan of sunglasses? Yeah. I've got f- I've got four drawers full of eyewear that I've just <laughs> narrowed down. Like I've just been sorting out my dressing room and I've got four drawers of it. And I've all like my favorite favorite thing to do is when I'm anywhere is to like go pick get them up from the thrift shop. So I've got this amazing pair, of, like they're very Iris Apfel, but I've got this amazing pair of like big round glasses. Um, and which my friend has actually been disappointed that she thought they were actual glasses and they're not. I wear a lot of glasses that don't have lenses in, even though I need the tiniest prescription. So sometimes they do have lenses in, but they, um, I, I like picking them up from like thrift stores and uh, vintage shops and also like just on the side of the street in like New York, in Brooklyn, they have like a lot of street sellers and I've got so many epic pairs of glasses and people are always like, where are they from? And I'm like, 
oh, literally, I just picked them up for like $10 on the side of the street. So I'm very much into that. But when I was a child, I was desperate to have glasses. Like, it's normally every child's nightmare, but I couldn't. I literally, like, used to, I once lied on an eye test <laughs> to get glasses, and I managed to get them. And, like, I'm, I've always loved glasses. And any accessory, like hats and glasses, I love, absolutely yeah. love. Yeah, that's so good. I've known, actually, like, you always want what you can't have, don't you? I have to yeah. wear glasses and I find them such a pain. And I've got a really nice pair, but they're so heavy that they kind of, they, like, they either stop me breathing or they hurt behind my ear. I have to kind of like choose That's the word. Which, yeah. which one I want. But yeah. I always find like styling glasses can be difficult with a fringe sometimes. It does make me consider like growing it out a bit because then there's always like, there's just so much here. Yeah, no, I get, I get what you mean. Yeah, no, yeah. 100%. I've had a full fringe before, but no, definitely I wear. And then I'm really into chains at the moment. So um, on my on my glasses. So I did have. Yeah. Um, I have got a really cool gold chain. I've seen a really cool pearl one. So I think that's going to be my next purchase. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and finally. Yeah. Da, da, da. I, I was hoping. <laughs> I'd enjoy. Um, so this is my shrimps bag. Shrimps is, um, I've actually put a Q&A out to um, Instagram. This is another one of my questions, like my all-time favourite designer. And don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of designers that I absolutely love, but she's just nailed it for me. Everything that she creates is me. I feel like she's made a collection for me every single time she releases. This is her latest collection. It was based on, like, cowboys and uh, cowgirls and I just absolutely love it That's and so nice. a lot of people have got sort of the, the simple pearl one which is amazing because it goes with absolutely everything but Jay got me this for my birthday and he nailed it because it's that sort of like quirkiness and every time I wear this people stop and talk to me about it like whether they know who shrimps are or not and it's just brilliant I highly recommend that if you're going to invest in a, a handbag that to go down the shrimp route and I love I love everything I've got a coat from her as well which I nearly brought as well yeah. but um, I love that too everything's such a good quality and definitely a designer I would invest in time and time again I've noticed that you've got like the stuffing in the bag and the stuffing in the shoes is that something that like do you like really take you obviously really take care of your pieces um, but do you well since this lockdown situation <laughs> I've had some time on my hands as I mentioned <laughs> So I've been through and I've organised all my bags and put them in like a display and organised all my shoes and put them in display because I just felt like that would help me like style and get ready. And I actually was watching another um, content creator and she like, she's got a lot of phenomenal designer bags and she like cleans them all once a month and stuffs them. And I thought, and I have got a few bags that I thought they really need stuff in like they were just all in their dust bags like just like in in a safe place but just in their dust bags and I thought actually stuffing them definitely does make a difference so yes this is my new thing I'm stuffing new everything year. and making sure it's looked after <laughs> oh yeah because I love my things I want them to last so it's uh yeah. yeah take care of them and like it's exciting pulling something out that you've not seen for a while but then also it's a shame because things can get like so forgotten and you're like oh I really should yeah be wearing them I hate that when yeah. you forget about stuff yeah and I'm really trying to like I am a hoarder and last year I had such a clear out it's embarrassing like I probably we've moved house and everything I probably haven't cleared out for 15 years prior to that and the charity shops where I live in Canterbury they've met that honestly they were like the whole shop was basically my <laughs> shop like it was all my things and it was so grateful and it made me really happy actually but I've really turned a leaf in that and I'm really enjoying just having like I've got two rails one for coats and things like that and then I've got one rail that is like what I'm wearing right now and I'm really keeping that up now I promised myself that I would never do that so putting all my bags out there was actually a few that I was like do you know what, like, I never wear this, and, like, in designer bags as well, and I don't think I ever will wear it, so uh, Vestier is going to be, I'm <laughs> starting to sell on there as well, so I'm going to get some things up, and also Depop, I've been selling those on there as well, so I'm really trying to stay on top of that now, and just have a rail of things that I absolutely adore. Yeah, good way to go, good way yeah. to be. That was a nice DJ type link, wasn't it? Come <laughs> Now on to a piece that I... I, I don't hate anything in my wardrobe because I yeah. clear it out now, but a piece that I've had in my wardrobe since 
probably last ooh, September. And I haven't worn it yet, still got the tag on, but I, I do love it, but I haven't been able to fit it into my style, which is a dress from Marge, which, as I said, I really love, and it fits me like a glove, which is why I bought it. It goes in at the waist, which is my shape, and it just fits so, so nice. But it's sort of not my style. It's cream, for starters, um, which I don't have anything against wearing white or cream at all. But um, I really just, I just loved its piping, and it's just so classically, like, just a classic piece, and uh, it's very, like, Chanel-esque inspired. Yeah. Um, and I love Marge. It's one of my favourite shops on the high street. I really, really love Marge. But I haven't worn it yet. The, the tag is still on, still on there. And I think the reason I haven't worn it is because of the weather. That's what I'm telling mm. myself at the moment. Because it's sort of one of those pieces that I didn't want to put a, um, a jacket with it. Because nah. it just ruined, I don't have a jacket that goes with this sort of style of thing or a coat that goes with this sort of stuff. I really didn't want to put a blazer with it because I felt I was going too formal down the sort of workwear route there. And I didn't want to pair tights with it, so it's a bare leg number because I'd need an exact match of that cream. Or this is like, oh, this is black. I thought it was navy. Okay, there we go. We <laughs> discover something every day. But I'm not really a black tight kind of gal. Anyway. Yeah. So I feel what's going to happen is now this sort of better weather is coming that um, I am going to wear it. But I find, I'm fi as, as I'm talking through with it, you can see that I find it really difficult to style. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, now I've found out this is black. Um, I have, I've had my eye. I really want to do a, um, I'm going to sell a lot of my sort of designer heels that I bought when I was um, a lot younger and didn't have a mortgage. And, <laughs> and oh, a big mortgage. And, um, I think I'm going to sell those and then if they sell, I'm going to put that money into either this pair of Gucci loafers that I've seen that are like a cream colour or this pair of black Pradas that I've seen, again, loafers, yeah. which are beautiful. I can't decide which one. And I think that's how I'd style it. I'd style it with like just loafers and socks, very Alexa chum. That would be and, really um, cute. That would be it. Yeah, that's right. And I guess sometimes there's pieces where you're like, oh, it's going to be too hot in the summer. But then yeah. in the winter, you don't like it with tights, too, so it can be yeah, really difficult. That's exactly, it's a very small window of opportunity, but I know when I wear it, I just felt, I felt great in it in the changing room. And I was just yeah. like, this is it. And also I got this, um, I've got an outlet village near me. And um, like personally. I thought, yeah, <laughs> just me. And I feel like it's my more walking there. And um, it's the most beautiful so they've done a new part of it it's at Ashford Designer Outlet cheeky plug there and um, they've done a new part of it with like a Marge and a Sandro and a Kate Spade is coming so this is like a tip I know that I'm sounding like um, oh yes my Prada glasses and this but I'm like the best person at finding things for really good prices so I got this for a third of the price it actually is in the real stores in the real yeah. stores um, but that Marge in there I'm on first name terms of all the people that work in there and they all follow me on Gosh, Instagram so if they watch this, hello. And I love them so much. Like I never feel like I feel like I'm going in there with like a load of friends and I try things on and they're so um, they're just a dream to be around. So um I just like going to with Designer like, just to go there and then once Kate Spade opens, well well <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's interesting what you're saying about not being able to find a coat with it as well because that's something that I find I have to have the coat has to go it has to be part of the outfit I can't just yeah. be one coat girl like this yeah. is my winter no. no and I think with that it's black and red and they're probably my two least favourite colours to adorn on my body like the piping and the, the detail is black and red so I wouldn't wear a black blazer Mm -hmm. I wouldn't buy that. And I do have a red blazer, but I'm actually about to pop it on Depop because it's just, I just don't love it at all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it just needs to be doing all the talking by itself. And um, with those... I just need to think about what bag I would pair with it, really. So I'm sure we can sort that yeah. out. Um, <laughs> yeah, so definitely, like, very Alexa Chung brogue and nice dress and sort of more cool girl than office girl. And that's how I'm struggling with it. Yeah, I've gone on about it because obviously I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm concerned here. It's a big concern. I know you mean it kind of needs like geeking up a little bit to make it. Yeah, like, cool. yeah, it does. Like it needs like that sort of like cool geek. Yeah, going on. Definitely yeah. socks. Well, if there's anyone that, that can do it, it'll be you. 
So thanks. Yeah. I'm really, really <laughs> here for that trust in my styling. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's any day now as soon as those brogues arrive in my life um, that's it that that's that's when it's gonna happen yeah i'm gonna be keeping a close eye out for them yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, one I day i fell a bit more in love with it talking through it there but um, yeah. yeah that's good right, so do you that want me to do you... my yeah. um, my random item now yes please this is really random but good. Really, no, it's very topical <laughs> um so it's this here Oh, okay. It is my new face mask, and um, obviously what's occurring at the moment, and it's from um, Helmstead, yeah. which is a phenomenal, um, I'm sorry for how many times I've said phenomenal, it's my word, that's <laughs> the way it is, I say it all the time. Um, it's a phenomenal um, Scandi designer, and um, she hand paints it, Emily Helmstead, she hand paints all her designs, and I saw this in a quilted jacket that she did, and I just died. Like I, she's one of my favorite designers along with Shrimps. Like I absolutely love her. In fact, if, if you're a Scandinavian designer that does colorful clothing, I love you. <laughs> and um, and I just absolutely love this, but it's, a, it's one of, it's a little bit, it's a very investment piece. And I was like, obviously I'd have to really, really, really love it to um, invest in it. So it's one of those ones that I'll probably think about. Emily Hamstead never ends up on Deep Pop or Festigate, but I am keeping my eye out. And um, she then said that she's all about sustainability and um, very much about the art of her pieces. And she then put out that she was going to use the dead stock from um, her latest collection to make face masks. And all the money was going towards the World Health Organization's charity. So it was a bit like, this is like a win-win situation for mm. me. Um, number one, I'm protecting myself and protecting others when I go out. And number two, I get to own a, a slice of Emily Helmstead's yeah. work. Um, and also to get to see how, how beautiful it is. Because I don't think anyone in store stocks it in the UK. It's all, have to order it all online. Um, so I thought I get to see like the craftsmanship as well, craftswomanship. And also... Um, what was my third point? Oh, and the money goes to charity. So yeah. I ordered that. I'm absolutely in love. I'm getting comments when I go out on my face mask, you know. We're going to have to wear a face mask. Uh, let's do it properly. And yeah. um, also means that we're not taking away all that stock from the key workers and the people that really need it of those real medical masks. These are proven to do like an 80% job. But, yeah, it's just like a really beautiful. And I think that when um, all this is over... <laughs> one day um i'm gonna frame it and i've got this she sent it with a really beautiful piece of paper that explained everything about it how to wash it um and to keep it hygienic hygienically that's not a word shift <laughs> hygienically well let's make it word safe and um also with her beautiful um typography and it was just really nicely presented when it was sent over the postage was as much as the mask right <laughs> Um, because it came from Scandinavia and uh, from Copenhagen, and but I love it, and it's a random oh. item that's sort of linked with my style as well, so I quite like that. I think that's fab, and I saw you wearing that like on your story the other day, and I think it is good because if we just make things fashionable as well, like safety mm. items, because obviously as an influencer, um, do you feel like you've got kind of any pressure to? What's the word? Not inspire people. That's not quite what I'm looking for. Like, I don't know, be a good person so they will be. What's that word? Yeah, set a good example. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's not the. That's not a very um, intelligent way of putting it. <laughs> Let's put it in simple terms. Um, yes, um, yes, I do. I suppose what I've learned over the years of being in this industry is I'm just really really recently this year in particular unapologetically me so mm. I'm if I think that wearing a face mask for this situation is the right thing to do then that's what I'm going to do and if you agree with it or don't agree with it that's completely up to you basically if you follow me and if it upsets you or annoys you what I do then there's this unfollow button that you can press and that's really how I feel at the moment and I feel that about so many things about loving pieces that do cost a bit more but I can justify why I love those pieces because I love the art and the creativity and I love pieces that last um also justifying it's like justifying 
I feel like at the moment, especially with everything that's going on in the world of um, sustainability and that side of things, that um, a lot of us are having to justify our purchases. Mm. And um, so I feel very strongly about what I love and what I create and the brands that I work with. And if someone wants to come and talk to me about that, I am so here to talk to them about that. So this year is definitely the year that I've been like, this is who I am as a human being and um, especially on stories where you get to see really who I am and if you like it great you're one of my people and if you're not see you later like yeah. that's absolutely fine too so and that's worked for me and I do actually have the best audience and I don't know if that's because that is my motto now or it's just because I'm very lucky to have these people that have found me um but yes I have the best audience and I literally talk I've, I realized the other day I literally talk to hundreds of people a day yeah on messages <laughs> it's insane but I love it like that's like part of the job that I absolutely love and we talk about um, all sorts of things and especially with uh, people having a bit more time and spending a bit more time on social media I've had new people that have obviously been following me and um, interacting with me on messages as well recently so we're talking about the house we're talking about fashion we talk about everything and anything so yeah that's very really really nice and yeah. you're giving people the confidence to do things or wear things or just be a bit brighter mm. with their fashion which is really nice have you always yeah. felt like confident in your style or have you ever gone out in something that you're like oh I feel a bit funny in this I'm not sure no not really I think the only time that I have felt uncomfortable is when someone has put me in a uniform which is sort of like the going back to my name and things like that because when someone else tells you what to dress whether that's like so when I was a teacher I had to dress a certain way I wasn't allowed to wear certain because I wasn't allowed to wear nail varnish I mean how that mm. changed the way a child learned is beyond me but that's another day um and so I wasn't allowed to be myself I wasn't allowed to have colorful hair when I wanted to have colorful hair I wasn't allowed to have nail varnish I wasn't allowed to um oh, I don't know wear certain colors of clothes and things like that it had to be very a muted version of me and then I've also worked in other industries where I've had a uniform like someone has prescribed how I am dressing and I think that's the only time where I haven't felt like myself and it definitely changes who you are, like how you come across and, and that's what a uniform does, there's loads of psychological studies into it. And um, so when I dress myself, no, I'm very, I am lucky to be very confident and I don't know where this has come from. Like my parents are always like, we have no idea where this has come from. My parents aren't creative at all. They aren't into fashion at all. Like my mum loves clothes, but she's not like, I style her more than she's ever like helped me type of thing. Um, and um, she knows what she likes, but she does love buying clothes, but um, she's not someone that would ever say that she's really into fashion. And um, I just think that, I don't know, I feel like it, I was born with it yeah. <laughs> because I've always loved dressing and clothes and, and styling. So yes, I'm very lucky to feel very confident in what I decide to go out in that day. Yeah, I'm the same, like I feel awful in a uniform and it, even to the point, yeah. you know, if there's like a dress code for something, then I automatically I think that. it really just, I'm like, oh, it stumps me. I hate it. Yeah. I definitely yeah. want to be able to, because I everything reflects on my mood and how I wake up and how I'm feeling that 100%. day and yeah to be told what to wear yeah really I, was, I went to an interview with um at London Fashion Week um, a couple of years back last year or so with Henry Holland and he was saying that how he he was talking about how like his dress sense is all over the place and I really related to it and he was saying that how his um mood is really like the clothes he wears is telling you how he feels that day so like if he's wearing black it is like leave me alone no one talk to me and if he's wearing color it's like come and give me some attention like speak to me and I feel like I'm obviously always wanting attention which I am like I love people stop stopping me in the street <laughs> and talking to me then um that that sort of definitely does you you dress how you feel really yeah yeah because it definitely opens up a conversation doesn't it I do that I think I wear if I'm feeling rubbish, I will move towards like darker colours and stuff. And I definitely know like, oh, I just, I feel like wearing black today and blending in. And then other days I'm like, oh, <laughs> in like floral yeah. dresses. And I'm stuff. here. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's like your armour, isn't it really, for the for the world then? Yeah, you're like, you're ready. It's, it's, 
who you are, how you dress. It's you're telling show, telling the world without speaking who you are. So um, yeah, definitely is very it's very important to me anyway. I know it isn't very important to everyone, but it definitely does say who you are as a person, how you dress. Yeah, because you can tell so much, can't you? Can you can sort of see down to like what kind of music someone might be into mm. from the way that they dress. I find it fascinating. Mm. It's so cool. Mm. You but, take yeah. influence from everywhere, definitely. Yeah. Fab. Yeah. Brill. And for the last bit, who is oh, your yes. style icon? <sighs> Maybe I should have told you this before so you had time to think yeah. about it. Oh, so many people. Okay. So it's very, um, how do I say it? A very predictable of me, but Carrie Bradshaw. Yeah. That's good. I admit, honestly, the styling on Sex and the City is my favourite. Pat- Patricia Field, who was the wardrobe on um, Sex and the City. Oh, my word. She absolutely nailed it. And I still, like, I, lo- I live my life through that programme. I can, I can quote something from that programme that relates to every part of your life and um, and uh she just absolutely nailed it down to like i still watch it now and i'm still like oh that outfit is epic and i love that carrie just dresses so randomly and you could never like if you had to describe her style again you could never describe her style and that's like why i like her the only thing you could say is that she really liked like jimmy choos and manolos and she liked high heels it's the only place we differ and um but she had a great black bag collection and um we're talking about a fictional character here like she's really <laughs> my hatches and she's um, so real. her wardrobe was just insane and i love that she mixed vintage up which is something i really love to do and um, she mixed like vintage pieces up with designer pieces and oh yeah she's my style icon yeah fab great good answer Okay. Thanks. Well, thank you so much. I've absolutely oh, loved great. it. Thank you so much for having me. That's yeah, it's been really fun. And I've loved seeing the pieces from your wardrobe as well. I can't wait to That's see you in that dress. <laughs> it's going to happen. I'm going to be watching out now. This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it is. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> well, I'm going to... Thanks so much. Thank you.